The sound of a woman wailing in agony carries over the soft woods. What do you do? Merrick is going to light a torch in the dim campfire. Turn to Jasper. What did you see? Eyes. I saw eyes. Red. Large. Its head is about as big as Bessie's. Whatever it is, it's not small. You can see both his blades have been drawn since you guys came out. He's slowly circling the camp. His eyes are going to go back up to that tree where he saw that owl last. Is it still there? It is nowhere to be found. Hope will take off in the direction of the uh, the scream. Merrick will follow. Yara will follow to the edge of the camp. She will wait a few minutes to determine if she is more needed here at the camp to guard things or join Merrick and Hope in figuring out what's going on. The sound continues off away from camp, further into the mists. Jasper, having seen that the owl is vacant from its perch, what do you do? Turn towards the uh, act where the guys walked off. He's going to say, don't go too far. I can't lead the horse like this. She'll pull up her moorings and run. He's going to jog over towards uh, Bessie and a sort of, it's okay, it's okay. And he's just going to keep an eye out to make sure nothing's trying to sneak up on her. I would like athletics from Hope and Merrick. Merrick. This hit you just as you were getting into your deepest of slumbers. You are still having to shake off a little bit of the sleepiness, but the torch being so close to your eyes is quickly waking you up. Hope you make your way ahead of Merrick if you so choose. I clear the way on my way over and I scream to Merrick, someone needs us. Charging ahead of him, you make your way further off into the woods, Jasper and Yara. I draw my weapon. I don't know if it's a good idea to leave the camp unattended, but I also don't want to leave myself vulnerable or the rest of the party vulnerable. Is it safe to say Yara is paralyzed with indecision at the edge of camp? Sure. She's drawn her bow. That's all she knows to do at this moment, but she is uncertain of what to do next. Jasper, I'm assuming you're still calming the horse. Yeah, he's not leaving. Give me a nature roll, please. Uh, actually, can I get a farm? Can I use farming instead? Farming more? Okay, it's a horse. Bessie is quite perturbed, but she begins to stop stamping so hard, and her baying becomes the un comfortable rustle that horses make. Yara, can you still see them? Can I? No, they're they're gone. The light of Merrick's torch has left your view. No, I, I don't know where they've gone at this point. I think I shall remain here in camp so we don't all get lost. I agree. I'm not inclined to chase after them. Merrick, Hope, can you still hear us? You can. Barely. But yes, you can still hear them behind you. Do you respond? Merrick will shout back, Oi! Don't go too far. Can't lead the horse. Hope tries to quell his anger for them trying to stop him in his mission. So he takes off with even more uh, impulsiveness, I guess. You just sprint for a good deal of time and just imagine that you must be closing in soon because something can only move so fast when you hear the cry echoing off of the woods just around you. Please make me a will saving throw. I continue on the path, looking for signs of anything. In a few more moments, you come into a burrow. Seems to be tree roots over a small indentation in the ground. You see these two glaring red eyes staring directly at you. Finally found you. Please roll initiative. Hope goes first. Hope will scream, where is the girl? And I enter my wolf stance. He lets out like a roar, kind of similar to raging. He lets his natural like anger take a hold. It's with this stance, if I flank them. So here's the, th the problem. You ran ahead of Merrick, and also it is inside of a burrow. You're outside of the end of the tunnel while it is shrouded in the darkness. All you can see are its two red eyes. I go back outside and just throw some darts. With two hands, you hurdle these darts at the creature, which seem to disappear into the underbrush. Seeing no visible result, you begin to back away slowly, and then it begins crawling out a long, taloned finger wrapped in an old rugged cloak extends poles 
I need a will saving throw from you. You do not lose yourself to the otherworldly fear that grips around your heart. Does he recognize anything about the creature? Does it remind him of the monastery? Whatever this thing once was, whatever it is now, the only thing that can be said for certain is that you feel at this moment the same fear that you felt those many years ago, like a child. Hope says, uh, I'm ready this time, never again. The beast climbs out of its hole, moves towards you. The creature's second claw lashes out and pierces into your side. It picks you up off of the ground and pulls you into just within reach of its mouth. And now that you can see beneath the cloak, what was once a fox, now touched by darkness, grins at you behind far too many teeth. Merrick, you arrive on the scene. He goes into a rage, seeing hope in the jaws of this beast. And for his second action, uh, he's going to perform a sudden charge. You rush forward, lunging with the falchion, trying to get the creature's attention. And as the blade bites down into its torso and blood runs along it, it does not seem to mind in the least. In fact, it tilts back its head. And as the cloak falls, you see two antlers up and jagged with an irregular number of horns. And it lets loose a howl that shakes the very earth beneath your feet. Hope, it is your turn. What do you do? Hope, seeing the smile on the creature's face, gets more into a rage. He's, he's angry about what happened to the person. I don't want to try to punch him. That's a critical hit. It's my last hit before I die. You strike at the arm that is holding you right beneath its maw twice and find that it is as thin and as rigid as bone. It hurts your hands almost to hit this creature in such a way, but you are close enough to hit it in the head. You rear back and with all of your might, row your knuckles into its vulpine lower jaw and snap its head up with enough force for bone to resonate. I'll use a free action to tell Merrick to go. Merrick, you're telling him to leave? Fuck off. Merrick and Hope, both of you bear witness as the creature's jaw, which has been broken off to the side, he reaches up, slams it back into place, and stands on his hind legs. Very softly, Hope, almost like a whisper, you can hear the same anguished cry of the woman from the lips of this beast. Oh, crap. The sound of this creature's cry fascinates you, Merrick. Your eyes begin to take on this glint to them, and almost a slack-jawed fixation takes over you. One action left. Oh, please roll a one. I did not roll a one. I rolled a two. And because this is Pathfinder, that is enough to hit. It sings a jaunty little tune opens its mouth and slams its otherworldly large jaws around Hope's right arm. Your arm is down the throat of this creature as it is gnawing upon your appendage down to the bone. Merrick. I'm going to attack it. There's a 26 hit. Yes. I can attack. That is a natural one. What do I do? You lash out with this falchion chopping at its jaw, trying desperately to get it off of Hope. And as it rears back with Hope's mangled arm falling limply out of its mouth, Hope still attached to it, it rears back and lunges forward. You stab with the falchion into its chest and it pushes you off with its head. The falchion is stuck in this creature. And that is when you see it hiss, loud as, loud as a thunderstorm, at the torch that you still have in your other hand that it brushed up against when it pushed you. And I make an attack with the torch. You swing out with the torch, and it does not stick up its hand to defend or try to parry in any way. It backs away, hissing all the while. 
Hope, you are bleeding out on the ground, my friend. Do you have any hero points remaining? No. I need you to roll me a recovery check. You are stable at zero hit points. It will be a while before you come to Hope. The creature backing up still away from you, Merrick, is trying to lash out with its claw. I have the torch up in front of me while it's doing this. A couple things. You see that where it brushed up against the fire seems to have ignited. And though it was quick to pat it out, the wound from the falchion that you carved into it and from the falchion that is stabbed into it is still bleeding. The second thing is that he is going to be making this attack with a minus two penalty. As it lashes out with this talon and scratches you across your torso before jumping backwards, the falchion fell and away from you high into a tree. With its other claw, it catches a branch, lets out another howl and rushes off into the night. I'm going to, oh God, I have absolutely no modifier to medicine. Um, I'm going to go over and check uh, Hope to see if he's alive. Hope's arm is utterly mangled. If he does not receive attention for it soon, there is a very good chance that amputation will be the only option. All right, Heath, uh, Hawk's short sword. I, I take off my shirt. I tear it so that I can kind of make a makeshift tourniquet around his arm just so it's not dragging on the ground. I grab him by his feet and I start pulling him back to camp. Yara and Jasper, the sound of animals fighting in the woods dies and maybe a minute and a half later, you recognize that as having been Merrick scrapping with this beast. Whatever it was, it did a number on Hope. His right arm is bleeding profusely. His breathing is shallow. You've never seen the young man look quite like this before. Something got a hold of him, made him throw caution to the wind and risk his life over seemingly nothing. Yara will rush to his side and start um, applying some pressure to the wound where she can and immediately calls out, Jasper, we need you. Oh, God, damn it. Told him not to go far. I mean, he's going to dig around inside. As as you say, you said not for us to not go far. Merrick goes, we were less than a minute away. A minute away, in the dark, away from us. You might as well have been in another continent. Actually, he's gonna grab the minor healing potion and begin bringing it over. Not angry at you, I'm more angry at Hope. Not like he can hear me anyway. He's gonna kneel down and, uh, I have zero medicine, but I have a healing potion. I presume that's literally, uh... The Great Equalizer. Yara, could you prop his head up and open his mouth? And he's just gonna pull the uh, cork out with his tooth, and, and I'm just pouring it down your th in your mouth. Yeah. And as I do, he's going to reach over, grab your mouth, close it, and hold your mouth and your nose shut, so you have to swallow. Um, <laughs> he's gonna turn to Merrick as he's doing this. I'm shirtless. You can see a tor you can see a large claw mark going from literally my collarbone down to my almost my groin. What was it exactly? It looked like a fox. But it was bigger than either of us. It had antlers, but it was wrong. There were too many horns. It was afraid of fire. Hope, you awaken with a start before you realize that the danger is past. Your arm hurts something fierce. You become aware of your surroundings once again. I still live, despite your best efforts. Did you not hear us say not to go too far? You could have sworn if Mara could hear us, you should have. I think uh, Hope would... Let out a tear and be like, I know I put us in danger, but I knew what I heard. Did you find them? The person screaming? It was the beast. I apologize to Merrick for the situation. I say, I'm sorry, my friend. Get in the tents. The rest of the night passes in uncomfortable silence. Having borne witness to what you saw, Merrick, I need a will saving throw. The rage carried you through it. But in your dreams, you see the creature. It stalks the woods behind you. Alone, come to rest under a tree. You see the two red eyes glaring at you from beyond the clearing. I think I hope would uh, go, go ahead in silence, kind of recollect on how he's not worthy yet, or he's not ready for the journey back. When you awaken again, the pale light of the morning sun 
is glimmering off the surface of the swirling mist that still seem to cling to the ground. So after you break your fast, you break your camp and solemnly into the morning you march. You notice that there is very little road to be found anymore. And that is the last of the landmarks that you are looking for before your journey takes you off into the forest itself. So Jasper has not made a attempt yet for the skill challenge. Let's get that going. As we're walking through the forest, Jasper is going to... I figure he's kind of leading the horse, since I think him and Bessie have kind of bonded a little bit over the course of this. Yeah. I figure that puts him probably at the back of the party line now. So with everyone in front of him, he's just going to... I'm going to use a diplomacy check. He's going to say, all right, well, we've been all quiet about this, but I'll say it. Obviously, made some mistakes yesterday, but as much as I wish admittedly would like to say I told you so, that's not helpful. We're going to have to get through this together. It means leave whatever we just had to deal with behind, move forward as a group. We're going to survive this, We're going to fight like a squad. Merrick will look back to you with this very wry expression on his face, and he'll throw his head back and let out a howl. When he finally finishes, he turns back to you with this grin, wolf peck. Jasper will grin. He'll do the same. A little bit more janky, but yeah, he'll do it. Yara will probably look at both men, just kind of give them an amused look, like, I see what you're going for, but, uh... Merrick will bump into your shoulder and howl again. He lets out the smallest, most unenthused, oh, just like, I'm too old for this. I'm surrounded by teenage men. I think hope would still be in his mind at this point, probably. Thing, you know, trying to find ways this wouldn't happen again. It wasn't strong enough. Seeing hope kind of off in his own world, Merrick will just go, three out of four ain't bad. It's something. The first failure's free for the skill challenge. You continue off into the woods, breaking from your journey's path along the road and now embracing unfamiliar landmarks such as particularly shaped trees. Finally, after a good couple of hours of journey, can I please get perception checks from everyone? Hope you realize that the flora, the natural greenery in the area, seems to break off into a far more vibrant, far more lush and lively shade of verdant green. The wood of the trees is a healthy, thick brown bark, and you can hear more birds chirping in the trees and even some small woodland creatures. It reminds you of a couple of days ago when the entire banner was marching into the village before the forests became this misty, dark, unpleasant place. The worst is over. It, his voice cracks from not talking this whole time. I wouldn't let our guard down so soon just because of nice scenery. He just shrugs and keeps walking. Any hey, nature checks from everyone? Or Arcana, your choice. Yara, you feel this deep undercurrent, this primal energy that seems to saturate the very air. You didn't feel it just a moment ago, but now that Hope has pointed out where you're standing seems to be so much more lively. You definitely feel it. Does it feel trustworthy or is it putting me on edge? Can you trust a thunderstorm? Can you trust a volcano or an earthquake? It, it is the primordial force of nature itself running through these roots and it seems to spread outward in the direction that leads a little bit off of the beaten path, but... Kind of suggests they go in the direction that she felt it pulling them towards. It is not too much longer before the four of you tying Bessie to a tree off to the side because she would not be able to navigate these tight quarters. You leave the trail and march into thick woods. And that is when you see a beautiful sight, a large white building. Yara, you and Hope both could swear that it seems to be made of the same texture as the ivory towers in Alabastria. There is no door to this building, but its purpose is imminently apparent as you arrive. 
a shrine. A shrine to a man. But I get religion checks from everyone. Help. You recognize this for a different reason, I think, than Merrick does. Merrick, you recognize this because you have come into direct contact with an elf before you met Soren's companion. They too have depictions of this person. Hope you recognize this as Malik as a mortal. Malik was the god king of mankind, the founder of Alabastria. Yara and Jasper, why you don't recognize this is for a very simple reason. Malik is the god of man, but it is very rarely depicted as he accurately was in the flesh, with long, pointed ears, thin, slender features, and completely bereft of hair save that for his eyebrows and his long, flowing locks. This is a shrine erected by the elves of Illyria in honor of their accord with mankind of the first age. Strange place for a shrine. That's just sort of taken with it. Doesn't really know much about it, but he's looking it over quietly. Hope will recount that it's Malik, uh, the god of man. Miracle go. I think there's anything valuable in there. Merrick, give me a perception check. You're not able to make out what it is, but you see something glimmering in the soft sunlight. Pretty high up, inside the shrine. Hope you're moving in after him. I have to protect him. He protected me. Hey, um, can you guys do me a favor? Could y'all, uh, roll initiative? Oh my god, that is unbelievable. That is a natural 20 on this creature's initiative. Jasper, make a will save for me. My weakness. That's a crit. That instantly kills him, doesn't it? Yeah, that does actually instantly we'll kill me. You. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to expend my last hero point so I don't instantly die. That was great. I'm stable, but... Yara, you're the only one that sees this. Jasper's shadow morphs into a set of wings before spears descend upon the man and antlers pierce into his back, driving him to the ground. A beast with a massive set of wings, a span of 16 feet, the head of a wolf, the antlers of a stag, and the hooves of a goat stands on top of your comrade. Yara, you have a free action. What do you do? Uh, it's not a scream of, like, shock. It's more of, like, surprise and anger and also to get the party's attention and just like, ah, something's happened. And it is Hope's turn. Hope uh, sees the action go down and he's, he lets out a, a, his own scream. And he's like, not again. He goes with the flurry of blows to save his other friend. For all my friends, I guess. He's he's com he's coming to realize he cares for these people, you know. Good time for it. Oof. Oh no, Hope. You seem to overextend a slight amount. As you charge up at the creature, you fling yourself. One of your blows ducks underneath. The second you connect your knee to its chin and try to drive your elbow into its snout, and it turns its antler and uses it to push you to the side. You're going to be flat-footed until your next turn. Merrick, it is your turn. I am going to draw a Hawk's short sword as one action, and I will perform a sudden charge with my second. That is a hit. You charge in after Hope and swing the falchion at the creature. It turns obliquely, intelligently, and minimizes the harm done to itself by only showing you its flank. Yara, it is your turn. Yara will stay in place and immediately hold her bow at the creature. Seeing her friend go down has uh, made her aim unsteady, as it has been the entire game. That was two critical misses. Boundary hates me. I'm sorry, Yara, you, you pull your bow, let loose an arrow, and as it just sinks into the side of this creature, no blood leaks out, but it fixes its gaze on you, making your blood run cold. Can I, as a free action, do something at the end of Yara's turn? Sure. I shout to Hope and Yara, Use fire! Merrick, it is going to try to gore you with its antlers. Oh no. I'm down. Oh no! I gave you the piece of advice you needed in order to make, uh, in order to get this thing away from us. Do with it what you will. Oh, 
He's gonna try to bite you. This is exactly what he needed to hit. You killed me. Dude. But the creature rushes towards you, Yara. Your friend's bleeding on the ground. Yara, what do you do? So I will use an action to pull out my kukri, try and stab it. You hit. Second roll. You launch yourself at this creature, and its skin bleeds beneath the edge of your kukri. The monster is going to try to strike you with its antlers. It lunges at you with its antlers, Yara, and you jump back just in the nick of time. The horns puncturing the soft ground beneath your feet. It roars and snarls, spending its other two actions wrenching itself free before, with another growl, it fixes its gaze on you once more. Oh, Merrick, recovery checks, please. Nice to know you. Get that plus one from Die Hard. That's nice. It's really nice. Your dying condition goes down by one. Merrick, yours does as well. You are now both at dying one. Yara, it is your turn. Hey, let's go. That's a critical hit. It's like you like the foundry. That will be the only <laughs> crit I ever get. I guarantee it. How do you critically hit this creature? When it lunges for me and I move out of the way, I use the opportunity to put one of my knives against its side so it inadvertently scrapes it the side of its neck all down. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it is It is looking pretty rough. It's bleeding quite a bit and haggardly. It starts to limp away as if it is trying to reposition itself on its turn. It uses an action to fly upwards into the tree nearby. And as it does so, it is going to try and hit you, Yara, with its fangs. Oh no. It rips into your shoulder taking you up off of the ground and drops you. You see stars and give me a perception check. That is enough to make out the shape of a figure in the mist. Something long and rather, what's what I'm looking for? Lanky. You can see as a creature that resembles a cat with eight legs and a long slender body places a paw on the chest of Merrick. A soft blue glow burns from the feline's eyes. And Merrick, you heal for two hit points, your eyes snapping open. Is this the comeback of the century? I hope so. Merrick, it is your turn. Cool. I'm going to stand up. One action. Where is it? There it is. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's plenty within range. It's not airborne anymore, right? It is hanging on to the tree. Would I be able to reach it with my sword? Yeah. Cool, I'm gonna do a sudden charge and make an attack with Ox Short Sword. That is a miss. Oh no. It bites down on the falchion as it gets close and tries to wrest it free from your grip. You hold on to it and as you pull it out, you can see that its tongue is bleeding and it does not seem to care. Yara, it is your turn. We'll take a step back and shoot it. I'm just so used to it always being terrible to me that even when it gives me a crit, I'm like, too little, too late, Forge. Your arrow pierces this creature in the eye. It lets out a shriek of pain and bats at Merrick again before spreading its wings intent on taking off. The creature takes flight, beating its massive wings as hard and as fast as it can. The wounds that it has accrued in this has overridden whatever intelligence it might normally have with natural self-preservation. The beast flies into the sky and out of sight. The sound of a soft purring can be heard. Jasper sputters and sits upright and just one, Goes to sort of just oh, blink and then look up and then sees cat. All right, what the fuck just happened? <laughs>